You're not gonna believe me when I told you I made this 3D Gaussian splatting scene on this MacBook Pro. That's right, in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to make Gaussian splats on a Mac using an M1 or newer graphics card. There is no other tutorial out there that I've seen to simply make these scenes. I'm gonna show you how to set up the software. It is an executable, so it's just click and go. I'm gonna show you how to train your first scene and I'm also gonna show you how to prepare the data to start training because that's where most people are gonna trip up. I made a really easy Gradio interface where you just tell it where the directory is and what settings you want and hit go. So enough yapping and let's get into that tutorial. So to start creating your own splats using a Mac, you're gonna use software called Brush and it's so easy to use. This is gonna make your life very simple. And there's a GitHub page I will make sure I link it in the description below so you don't have to go searching for it. And you'll see there's these releases. And what we want is their latest 0.2 release. Again, this is kind of like an open source beta project. So there's things that will keep improving. So you might want the 03 or whatever comes up next. But if we go down to this bottom of the release page, you'll see that there's the Apple Silicon release. Click on that. It's going to download it. And it's just a zip. So I mean, I'm just going to unzip this guy. And I want to take this guy and I'm going to just drop it into, um, I'm just going to drop it into my root folder because I like to keep things in there for these projects and not keep it in my download. But it's up to you where you want to keep that. And you'll see it says it's called Brush App. And this one is Arch64 Apple Darwin. Um, I have an old version up here, so don't get confused by that on my screen. So if I just double click in there, then you just got to run the app. And let's see here. It's going to give you this brush app not opened just hit done that's because your malware killed it so if you run into that you got to just go to your uh privacy you just have to go to your privacy and security settings like so uh and then at the bottom you'll say brush app was blocked we just gotta say open anyways open anyway give it that permission and now you don't have to like worry about that again. It, every time it should know that this app's approved. So now here we go. And it's a really simple interface, which should make your life easy. And I'm just gonna kind of go through each little part and then tell you how to start creating your own splats. So at the top here in your settings, spherical harmonics, that's basically as you look at something, how much like color and reflectance changes as you change your view direction, leave that default. Three is the best. I think that's what you want. It'll be a smaller file if it's less, but it won't look nearly as good. Image resolution, again, if you can leave it at default or say 1500 or 1600, that's kind of like the default for a lot of these. Somewhere in that range is a good place to start and maybe end with. And I think you can, I don't know if you can actually, I've never tried making it 3000. Yeah, you can, you can type in whatever you want if you have the GPU space like that. But you know, I always say just try the default first then try other projects where you can bump that resolution up. So for me, I'm just gonna leave this, I can leave this at 1600. Limit max frames and split data set for evaluation. You're probably not gonna deal with these as well. Just leave those at default. And then uh, the training to 30,000 steps. Again, I say start there. It's gonna look really good. Most of the stuff I do is at 30,000. You can go up from there. 60,000 is gonna look great, 100,000. It just takes a lot more time and it's a loss. So once you hit 30,000, you stop getting a lot of really good gains, but um, you can you can play around with that. But again, I would do your first one at 30,000. Moving down, the evaluate. Don't worry about the evaluate. Again, not worrying too much about that. I'd leave that as is. And then export. That'll export a file. So if I go here, back out to this old folder I have, and to an old project, you can see that it exported at 5,000, 10,000, and 15,000 uh, steps. And so it's kind of like your autosave. And I think 5,000 is great. So just in case something airs out, you run out of room, you have something. And you can make that more or less often. Just watch out. The files aren't super small, so it can start to add up. And when you're done, I suggest going in and deleting the ones you don't want to save. Uh, and then if you scroll down, rerun settings, I did not go over rerun.io in this tutorial, but that's an advanced visualization uh, app that you can run with this. For this, just skip it. That's going to get complicated. And now you can load your file. So you don't drag and drop in this. You actually have to click to load. 
So you can load a file, which is a zip, or you can load a directory. So if I have a directory of images on my computer, I can just point it to that directory, or I could point it to a zip file. And you could also have, let's say, a, a PLY file that you want to just visualize sitting out on a server. So I can do that. Instead of loading the zip, I can just load one of these. So I'm just going to load this guy in there. Oops, I can't actually drop it, like I said. Load file. Going to go to that folder right here. And let's just load this small one. And it's going to load that scene, and you can start visualizing it right away. So that's... That's like a quick way to pull in the visualization and look at a scene you've already trained. Uh, notice it doesn't start training right away. That's just bringing up like the visualizer. So let's see here. I actually don't know how to clear this as well. So I'm just going to restart this app as a way to clear it. Okay, so I'm back in. It's all cleared. Um, at the bottom here, you have some stats about the scene. I guess I could have kept it up, but I'll tell you how many splats were in that scene the degree of spherical harmonics, and then how much of like your system you're using as your training. And as you can see, I'm on the base Apple Mac M1 13 inch. I mean, this is my travel computer, not my powerhouse for making splats, but it works, which is which is really neat. And then the last thing is the scene. So as you can see, this is where I'll be able to visualize the scene when it's training or after the fact, when you want to look at something. And so that's where all the, you can see the visual magic happening. So let's, let's start creating one. So they have these presets as scenes that you can just download and start using yourself. I already downloaded, I believe, the bonsai set. And so all I have to do then is load that bonsai set in. So if I click on this guy, it's just going to take me to a download page. So I already did that. So let's get back to the brush app. And from here, I can go to settings, load file, and it's going to be imported as a zip. So I can go to my downloads and it's this bonsai zip. So now it's just loading up that bonsai and it's going to start training in a minute. And you can see it's not a ton of images and they're actually not super high resolution either, but it's already training. And as I move this around, it kind of shows the reference image, which is kind of a neat little feature that was sort of linked and you're creating your first scene. So you can see we only have 206 splats three degrees of spherical harmonics that's kind of locked in. And then what step we're at, we're doing what, 3.6, 3.8, four. So it's, you know, the training steps are, are going, um, on my computer, when I did a higher res image, I think I was only doing like one and a half steps. So this can take a while. However, I know someone has an M2 pro and they're getting 15. They're getting, you know, way more than I am to train. So just letting you know, if you have the base M1, this still might be kind of slow. So you just got to be patient and down sampling your, your resolution will help. So as this goes, again, you can see like the allocation used and what step you're on and it's going to save at 5,000. So we'll re you can let this run. I'm actually not going to sit here and let this run. That would take a long time, but you saw how easy that is to get up and running. So you, anytime you can also pause the training. So now it's like a lot faster because it's paused. And this love live update, the splats, I can actually pause that. And so now it's it's still training, but it's not giving me the feedback. Again, that might help speed things up a little bit. And then if you uh, hover over controls, it'll tell you how to like move around the scene, things like that. Uh, I, I last thing I want to point out is there's an export button here that'll that'll export your your saved result at any time. So you can just kind of like quickly grab a version as well. So now I've showed you this super easy. You can go and start creating them today, but this tutorial's not over because I kind of skipped over something that's really important. It's how to get the file so you can start training. Because if I download this bonsai, let's go look at that zip. Go here to downloads, this bonsai zip, and I unzip it. I end up with this folder with an images. Here's all my images and a sparse folder and a zero folder and all these files you need all these things to start training and that's not easy to like come up with on your own and if unless you know how to use cold map or you get them somewhere else so i made this easy so i'm going to close brush and i'm going to go back to my to github and i have a repository specifically for creating these and i made an interface that you can work with so it's not super hard and it's called, I call it my cold map radio interface. And I'm just going to walk you through how to run this. It works super easy. Um, 
and it will let you pre-package a folder of images to be exactly what you need. You're gonna need Miniconda if you don't already have it on your computer. So go ahead and download that. Um, there's just a button to that. So once you do that, go through all the like default configurations. Don't do anything. Don't do anything special, just let it go. It's it's super easy to download and install. It's, it's just like any other program. And then you're gonna need to install Colmap. So you're gonna bring up terminal. So I'm gonna search for terminal and we're gonna be dealing in this terminal. So let's close the actual current terminal I had going for brush, like so. And you need to install Colmap and it's gonna tell you to do it through Brew. Again, if you don't have Brew, you're just gonna click on that link and go download Homebrew. You're just gonna copy that and paste it in here. I already have it, so it's gonna be um, something I don't wanna try to install twice. I think it might get confused but super simple. And it's just gonna install. What Brew is, is a way to easily install packages on your computer, some code, some things, you don't have to worry about it. So now I wanna install Colmap, because Colmap is the software that will figure out where all these images are in space. So you can Brew install Colmap. I already have it installed. So I'm guessing it's just gonna tell me all that. And there is, looks like it might be also updating what I have. So there you go. Um, it, yeah, since it's already installed, I can reinstall it, but I'm not going to. And then you're going to need Image Magic, so it'll help you resize your images. It should tell me the same thing, but basically it's just going to run and at the end tell you you've installed Image Magic. So super simple. And neither of these take very long. And then you need to create what's called a Conda environment. So that's like a little environment that keeps everything um, separate from the rest of your computer so you don't get like file dependency issues. Just copy this top line and hit return, put it in there, and it's gonna create it. Doesn't take very long. Then it's gonna tell you to activate that environment. So every time we wanna run this software, we just gotta activate the environment like so. And you should see, instead of base, you see this coal map environment. We created an environment for running coal map that um, is gonna make your life so easy, trust me. The last thing we need to do is we need to, we need to clone this dependencies. I guess, it, I'll add to here, you need Git, so I'll add that to instructions, but Git is easy to install as well. But we just go here, and actually, I think I copied too much. We just want this top line, like so. Okay, I'm just gonna paste that. It's gonna clone that. It's gonna create a, a folder called Colmap Radio, and it's gonna put it in my root folder. So again, that's like here, my J Stevens folder. There is a Colmap Radio folder and it pulled these files, which is all we need, not much. And I go back to my instructions. We wanna make sure we change directory into that. So I'll just go here, change directory. So now we're work, working within that folder I just showed you. And then back to my instructions one more time. We have this requirement. So now I'm gonna install some specific so, uh, backend requirements to run all this. And I created a list, so you don't have to like manually do this and it shouldn't take very long, but then it'll set up your, your environment to run Colmap just right. Okay, so I did run into some conflicts. I probably had made a, a goof when setting up this as far as what works, what doesn't. I will make sure I have fixed all that before you download this, but what happened is I told to download the wrong versions of something. So I'll go ahead and fix all that for you guys, and you shouldn't run into that, but once you're done, everything should be installed and ready to go. And so the last thing I need to do here is um, run it. So there's this usage. I'm just gonna copy this guy and run Python. Okay, and then once it's done, it's gonna tell you to run on this local URL. So I'm just gonna copy and paste that into my browser. Click a new tab. All right, once I'm in the Colmap interface, it's pretty easy. It tells you that I need to provide a, a workspace directory with an images folder. So for this example, I'm actually gonna use a folder that's got a bunch of pictures of a bird statue at a zoo called Zoo Bird. And in that Zoo Bird folder, you know, I just have a folder of images of this, this statue. So it's like if I was to move through these, you'll see it's kind of like a bird made out of trash. And the, the resolution on these images are kind of high. You can just tell by their 6.2 megabytes a piece. So if I go into the info on one of these, uh, you can see it's, it's, it's pretty large for these photos. 
And so I want to make sure that I want to downsample these from 12 megapixels. So I'm basically, to run this, I just go back to this interface, find the working directory, not the images directory. I'm going to copy that path name. And you might need to change your view settings to see this path. That's an easy way to grab it. And just paste it into your workspace directory. And then we can downscale these images because we don't actually need the 12 megapixel. You're not even going to train your splats on that. I'm just going to pick 1600 to make things go fast. And then since I didn't take all the pictures necessarily in a row, I'm going to pick exhaustive and click workflow. But if you have a bunch of images that are like you take in one, you take a step, take another step, take another step. And as you're taking photos, you're taking a sequential number of photos. You can use sequential. It'll speed things up. Or you can use spatial. That means you have geotagged images. So pick the right one, pick the right scaling, and it'll take care of everything for you. You can hit run workflow. You'll see it's processing. You're not going to see a log. Just unfortunately, it doesn't do a live stream of your log. It will show me that at the end. And so we'll see that in just a moment. So it's going to start running things. In the background, uh, you can pull up terminal and you can start seeing it running. So it already ran a bunch of stuff for us and see how long it took, you know, less than a minute to do um, the, the, the camera registration. So as it's going, you'll see it just run up in time. And then when it's done, it'll dump out a log telling us it's done. So I'm going to fast forward to when that part finishes so you don't have to sit and watch it. Okay, it's done. As you can see, this didn't take very long. It wasn't large data set. It was only, um, you know, like I think 31 images. So it goes pretty quickly, but at the end, it should tell you the results are in this folder. So again, if I go here, you can see it created a database folder. It had kept my original images, put them in an originals folder. You have your images subfolder. They're much smaller. And you have a sparse output folder with the pro the project files that you're going to need. So now I want to go train my, uh, train this. So I'm going to basically go back and start brush back up, open up the brush app. And from here, I just need to load the directory, not the file, because it's not zipped together, of that, that zoo bird output right here. And again, I have the images. I'm just going to pick the working directory, hit open and it's going to put it in there and it's going to start training. And I have no idea why this is sideways. I have run into that in the past. If that is a problem for you, you might need to actually rotate your images. I think this is because I took this on an old iPhone and it doesn't always have the orientation correct on that. But if you run into that, you might need to rotate your images ahead of time and do some manipulation. So as you can see, it's starting to run. The steps are very low, but that's also because there are like larger images. And uh, my, my computer is not very fast. But when it's done, you'll have a really cool looking scene, which, which you can export, you can put into Super Splat to clean up and do all sorts of neat things. And it's that simple to start creating your own Gaussian Splats on a Mac. All right, there you have it. I really suggest following that brush project because this is release 0.20. And I'm sure there's gonna be lots of upgrades to make this work faster, be better. And it's just the tip of the iceberg. And as always, if you found this tutorial helpful, please like and subscribe to my channel. I'm going to have a lot more content. Next up will probably be about the type of images you want to capture and how many and lots of questions around image capture because that dictates the quality that you will eventually get out of your Gaussian splats. Well, anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.